The infinite zoom or never ending zoom effect is a very cool visual effect that gives the viewer an experience of visual flow that goes seamlessly from one scene layer to another. The example here was created in Camtasia using animation keyframes for zooming combined with green screen effects and of course some creative ingenuity. Lots of tips and tricks here. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If you're new here and you want to learn tips on video editing, video marketing, Camtasia, and YouTube, then hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Step number one, choose images with square or rectangular features for green screen effect. So as you can see here with image one, we have a laptop on a table and we have a nice green uh, rectangle colored in there. All the images were done outside of Camtasia through Photoshop in my case. And inside Photoshop, all I did was, in this case for the first image, I just added a rectangle to overlay the area that was there in the native image. In the second image, we have the mobile phone, but notice how we have the fingers overlaying the screen. So I had to use a little bit of this bucket fill technique to um, you know, work to clean our image to get it to work. And then we ended up with a nice clean product like that. This was done similarly for all the images in our five image sequence. This is the first image in the sequence. Here's the second image in the sequence. And again, just remember the rectangular shape of green is an area that will be zoomed in as we go through the process of creating this special effect. Image number three, image four, and image five, the final image. And the last component is a video clip that we've added, which you'll see at the end, which is a reveal piece of content. Step number two, stack the images. As you can see, I have the five images here, one after the other, one on top of the other on the timeline. And the reason for that is because one layer is going to zoom into the next layer. And that's why each layer is little longer than the one before. So when this image zooms into this one, you'll see this one stays on screen for a bit. And they're also multi-layered. And then the next one comes and then the next one. And you'll notice this one is a little off stagger to the right. And that's because we're going to be moving this a bit to the left when we do the, the zoom. So there's another dimension to the effect. And the last one here goes in, in parallel with that. So there you are, they're stacked. It's pretty straightforward. Step number three, add the remove a color visual effect. As you can see, we have the five images layered here and each one has the remove a color visual effect on it. You see it in the first one, the second one, et cetera. It's the same all the way down, but we're gonna just copy this first one to explain a little uh, important message here in usage of the remove a color when you have an animation going. So just stretching that out a bit. So to, to, to help with matters, I'm just gonna delete the animation, which had our zoom in effect. Actually, I'll put that back for a second, show you it has the zoom in right out to fill the screen. All right, I'm gonna remove that now. And we cut it and we have our remove a color, but I'm gonna get rid of that now as well. Okay, so right now, that was a reset and a delete. Okay, so there's nothing there. And if we scan through, there's nothing going on. If I add the remove a color now, and then I go and I sample here with the eyedropper and get rid of the color, see we have black showing all the way through, okay? Which is the color of the canvas, which is what would show through because we don't have any of the, the other layers, visual layers below at the moment. But now, Let's add back our uh, an animation, okay? Here we go. Our animation's back. So now you can see how the animation scales out. Everything's fine and everything's cool. But if I wanna go now and uh, you know adjust things and I wanna go ch change the remove, uh, you know, cut out the remove a color now, and you know, it's, it's green. And now I want to add it back in. If I go to add it back in, 
I need to have this toggled on up here. Because there's an animation here, this option exists. Right now it says property changes affect a single animation, but we want this to now to affect all animations. Property changes affect all animations. So now when I bring the remove a color back in, you notice the red of the start and end keyframe lit up. That's because it applied to all frames. Okay, so now if you look and I go uh, sample the color for the remove, it applies everywhere. So it's all nice and clean. Step number four, adjust image duration timings and set up the zoom in effects. So as we can see, all the images are here, one, two, three, four, five. Notice I've hidden tracks um, two, two through uh, five here to be able to demonstrate the zoom in effect. So starting here at the beginning keyframe, you know, this is just a custom animation, which I got from if we go up here, drag, you would just drag the custom animation onto here and then adjust the begin and end keyframes, which we did for each one of these. So at the start keyframe here, notice the scale in the top right here is 37.1. Now, if we go towards the end here, the, and we just sort of follow that path that we went along, okay, the, the screen is full about there now. And we're at eight, uh, already at 83.8%, but at the full end, we're at about 88.6. And the reason why you scale, it's scaled a little longer is because I, I wanted this length to the animation to get the speed flow that I wanted the way it works in conjunction with all the others. So that's one example. Then I'm going to hide that track and then open up the second track. Let's come back to the beginning. And then you can see here, oops. And you can see here, if we come, the scale starting here is at about 32%. And then at the end, to fill it out, it goes to 215%. The reason why that's so big is because we're working with a smaller area. And again, remember the chroma key is keyed out and it's black because all we can see is the canvas because I've, I've hidden the rest of the tracks at the moment. So you have a much bigger zoom here to get to that again till we fully fill in the uh, the zoom in effect, all right? Next one. And by the way, one other thing to look at is each of the images were, you know, not exactly a 16 by nine ratio. So to start out, I had to set them in. And uh, in this case, there was a little, you know, scaling of the image to start with in order to, uh, to get it to fit inside the frame. Okay, back to the next one. So now you see there, there's this whole house and the third door on the right is where we did our chroma keying. And to zoom in, look at that. You have to go in quite a ways, okay? So if we go to there and look here, we see this one zoomed in, scaled in to 77.3. Now, one other thing to just notice here, which comes into play in the next two layers, you see the white brick on the left. It's still there and it gradually fades out to the left. Well, I made the um, other two images slide to the left to make it look like it flowed together. And you're going to see that in a second. So we'll hide this layer, go to the next one. And this one, we started the zoom in a ways. And the reason why we didn't have to start it earlier is because this image didn't become visible in, in the mix of what we were doing in the layering until about now. But you notice how it's starting over here. If you look, that's because it's actually coinciding with the brick. And uh, if we uh, just bring in the other layers, you'll see here that as I start, okay, you're gonna see, see the image starts to come in there. So we started the zoom just around there. And again, the length of it has to do with the speed. I'm gonna isolate those layers and we're here. So this, as I said, slides left and then it does, and that's where this keyframe ends zoomed in at 261%. And then we now we do a zoom into the monitor to fill out the screen. Okay. And that fills us out at 78.6% on that scale for that zoom in piece. Okay. But the image below, and I'm going to undo that. If you notice that these two keyframes are in parallel and have the same start point. So if you notice the first 
the two of them are moving together. So this inner image here, okay, which is of the uh, bokeh effect with the couple holding the mobile phone and the gentleman sitting at the desk with the monitor, they move together, okay? And then the next zoom is where we zoom into the monitor, but you notice how the other one lags slightly behind. It's very cool effect, and then it eventually fills the screen with uh, this last one scaling at 204%. Now, if we hide both of those, you'll see underlying all of this is our little video clip with the little girl uh, playing with the rabbit. But it didn't come in, and I'm going to uncover all the other layers. Now, we didn't bring in the little girl with the bunny rabbit till it actually, see right there? This little section in here is now starting the scene. So there's the video clip. It starts actually there. And there's no zooming or anything done with that clip because I desired the effect to be more like a reveal to fill out that scene to show in the end. Wow, this green screen infinite zoom style effect involves a little finessing, but as you can see, the result is very cool. If you need any assistance to uplevel your video editing and video production skills to grow your business, or you want to add some additional talent to your production team, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website, gordeisman.com, and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.